Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren with Alma Apothecary and today I am taking you behind the scenes as I make some of my all natural beeswax lip balms. If you're new here, welcome. Alma Apothecary is a handmade small business and we specialize in all natural products. Some of our main product lines are soaps, balms, bath bombs, and candles. But we also do make some teas and spices as well. So the point is that everything here is made with natural ingredients. And um, if you are a conscious consumer who just likes to know how things are made and likes to know what's in your products, this is a great video for you. Or perhaps you also have a handmade small business and you're curious to see how others do it. Either way, welcome and let's get into it. So first things first is to pull my hair back and glove up. So excuse me here while I get my hair net on. All right, now we're ready. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my empty lip gloss tubes ready. And for that, I have this awesome, this is a silicone um, lip gloss filling tray. And I find that it's just such a helpful thing to have. <laughs> Today I'm making peppermint beeswax lip balm and I'm going to make about 35 or so. The recipe that I use makes about that amount. And uh, this is my tried and true lip balm recipe and I don't mind sharing it with others. Okay, so as you can see, this is a really helpful tool. This holds 50, but I'm just making about 35 or so. So I put them in the outer edges so it'll stand up like a table for me. Next, I'm gonna combine all of my carrier oils. And to do this, you wanna be sure that you're using an accurate uh, kitchen scale. Okay, so the main ingredient in beeswax lip balm is of course beeswax. And today I am using 100% organic beeswax. And I'm just being really careful to measure it out here. Now this is organic beeswax, but I also, um, some of you might know I'm also a beekeeper. I'm a newer beekeeper, so this is my second year, but in the future, I'm going to be using wax from my own hives. And I actually just rendered down some of my first wax from a honey harvest this week, actually, which is so, so, so exciting. Um, so that is one of my huge uh, goals and, and dreams, one of my small dreams for the business is to be able to have my own wax from my own beehives used in all my products, which is pretty cool. So that's the beeswax. So next we're going to add coconut oil. And this is also organic coconut oil. And now, an, oh, I forgot to mention, um, one of the reasons that I use beeswax um, is not just because I'm a beekeeper and a bee enthusiast, but because it's so good for your skin. The molecular structure of beeswax creates a natural barrier between your skin and the environment but it also is um, high in vitamin A, which is a uh, which contains retinol and is a natural antioxidant. And then another thing about beeswax is it's a natural humectant, which means it draws in moisture, water molecules from the air and helps to hydrate your skin. So that's just a high overview, but beeswax is so, so good for you. In addition to, of course, being all natural. All right, so let's get into this coconut oil. The coconut oil that I'm using is organic, as I mentioned, but it is also, um, this is refined. The reason that I use refined is because I wanna um, flavor this with peppermint essential oil. And 
the unrefined just has a lot of that coconut flavor and I don't want it to be coconut flavored. So that's pretty much the main reason. So I'm just trying to get this measurement exact to the gram. Pretty good there. Another tip is that I measure in grams instead of ounces. I started out measuring in ounces, but I just converted my recipes to grams because grams are more accurate. It's a smaller measurement, so it gets you a more accurate recipe. And then last but not least is shea butter. Mm. If you're unfamiliar with shea butter, it also has just an amazing amount of benefits from for the skin and most of it is found um, harvested from western africa it's from the butter of a nut the nut of the shea tree and it's a big industry over there as long as you're careful about your source and your supplier it actually provides a lot of jobs for people who live in the region where the shea trees are grown all right, we're getting close here. Okay, now I've got my carrier oils and waxes in the pot. And what I'm going to do is just put this on a double boiler, which means I'll have a pot with water in it that's boiling, stick this on top and just melt it down. Of course, the beeswax is gonna take the longest to melt. And we wanna um, stir as we go and heat it just till the beeswax is melted. We don't wanna heat this really high or boil it because it's gonna denature some of the oils. And I love to use a, hey babe. Hey, sorry. I'm almost done here. And I love to use a, a glass pitcher with a pour and a spout. All right guys, all of my carrier oils are melted down. And so I'm gonna go ahead and very carefully measure out my peppermint essential oil. It smells so good. And a note that I always like to say is be incredibly careful when you measure your essential oils. Too much can be harmful for people and you should always use an essential oil calculator to determine the safe usage rates for your batch size. So that's what I'm doing here, measuring really carefully. so good. And now we pour. I've moved upstairs to finish these off and in order to make the tops really smooth and beautiful I like to hit them with the heat gun. The tops are all nice and smooth now so they're ready to cap. I love this tool. This is from um, Crafter's Choice, the silicone tray that I'm using, because it helps the um, outsides of the tubes not get slippery from the wax, which helps me to label them more easily. So pretty happy about that. If you saw my previous video um, from Day in the Life, you'll notice that I did have to take some time to re-secure some of these labels. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this well, but I have upgraded a lot of my labels and I'm using online labels to design these. Sorry about the glare. I've got a lot of <laughs> skylights in here, so it does bring quite a lot of glare. But I'm just creating some, uh, just slight changes to my label here. And then I'll be able to print these out on my home computer. 
already labeled a few of the lip balms and I'm so happy with the way that these came out because of the silicone tray that I used to pour the lip glosses or lip balms rather um, the sides did not get slippery at all in the past when I poured them by hand the sides would get slippery and it was like I could never get the labels to really stick that well so now that <laughs> That's not a thing. I can tell already that these labels are sticking way better. So excited about the finished product. And I wanted to take a moment to talk a little bit about ingredients. If you watched from the beginning of this video, you know that this is a three ingredient lip balm. I use equal parts beeswax, shea butter, and coconut oil. And I also have a recipe that uses cacao butter instead of shea butter. And my philosophy is less is more when it comes to ingredients. And so if you're a conscious consumer and you're checking the labels on things, you know, it's my belief that you don't have to have 20 different ingredients in a lip balm for it to be good for you. Um, all of these ingredients are so good for your skin and then I only use the pure essential oils for all of my body products. Uh, and I always use safe usage rates. So, you know, these products are so great for you without having to have a bunch of added chemicals and things that you can't pronounce in it. So I'm gonna keep going with these. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching another one of my videos. I hope this gave you some ideas if you're a crafter. And I hope that if you're a customer of mine, it just kind of shows you the love and the care and the thought that goes into the products as well as, um, you know, what is inside. That's what counts. So uh, thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.